Good morning, students. How are you guys doing? As everyone at home, I hope you guys are keeping safe. Please make sure you keep yourself safe because this is very, very necessary at this point in time. All right? You are all welcome to this online class. I hope you guys have been watching the videos. Please make sure you keep on watching the videos and keep getting better. All right? Now, the last topic we treated happened to be um, intercommunal relationship. Okay, and we're continuing from the, um, according to our scheme of work, what we're supposed to do for week nine and 10, see goes together. That is still talking about intercommunal relationship as a continuation of the last video, which happened to be intercommunal relationship. Now continue, the, um, the last video we talked about um, what is interpersonal relationship, where, where I told you that the personal relationship is the relationship that exists between an individual and an individual and this relationship that exists between two people or more people okay and um there we also talked about you know types of friendship uh, types of relationship of platonic relationship um platonic um you know and many other ones that we have the platonic um relationship we have um, um you know workplace relationship we have peer group relationship and many more like that, that is classmate relationship and many more. And we also talk about intercommunal relationship where we discuss that um, intercommunal relationship is a relationship that exists between two communities or more. That is, and a community and another community, maybe coming together, bonding together for me for business related issues or some other benefit, political or many other reasons that would bring two communities together to have a bond. Now, from there, we're moving to the next um, top, top topic, let me put it like that, which is happened to be for week nine and week 10. And the subtopic we have to look at is challenges of intercommunal relationship. What are the challenges of communal relationship? First, let's look at the objectives. That is what we are expected to learn on the, at this lesson or on this video. At the end of the lesson or video, the student should be able to, one, I like the ways of promoting intercommunal relationship. Two, I like the challenges of intercommunal relationship. And three, I like the problems of boundary disputes in Nigeria. And number four, explain the skills for resolving intercommunal conflicts. That is, so I, in, in this video, all the subtopic is going to be explained and at the end of the, of the video, it is expected of the student, each of the students should be able to highlight every of these objectives. Okay, now let us go to the subject matter. The first subtopic there is ways of, um, of ways of promoting intercommunal relationship. Again, ways of promoting intercommunal relationship. The first one there is tolerance between community members. That is, you know, community members should tolerate themselves and even tolerate, tolerate visitors. You know, there are, there are some communities whereby they don't tolerate, they don't, they don't like visitors, they don't like people who are not member of their community. No, how we can tolerate the communal relationship is when we accommodate all and tolerate others who are coming to our community. Maybe to do business, to find friendship, so maybe for political reason, any reason it may be, maybe for sporting activities or musical concerts, we should be able to tolerate one another. As a result of that, there will be um, you know high level of intercommunal relationship. Number two, fairness and justice to all community members. That is, every community member should 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 be based on fair judgment. No, no, nobody should be discriminated, nobody should be should be should be seen as most powerful or more higher or more reckoned with than another. Everybody should be given fair judgment. Whenever cases happen, it should be the, the, the cases should be judged and, and on a fair level. Okay? So all members should be treated fairly and justice for all community members. Now number three, number three now, promotion of human rights, that is Government should ensure that people's rights are protected at all times. And you know, if government is able to do this, then there will be promotion of communal intercommunal relationship because a lot of um, you know citizens of another country 
or another community want to come to that community to stay, do business, or even you know come there to marry. You know, aside from other things that might even bring them to the community. So as a result of that, promotion of human rights can also promote intercommunal relationship. Number four now, politics without tribalism, that is the party in government should avoid being tribalistic. You know, with the argument in the past whereby polit polit politics in this country is being done according to the tribe. As we know that we have three major tribes in Nigeria. We have, though we have several other, but the major tribes are Yoruba, Hausa, and Igbo. And, you know, by making sure that people who are in government doesn't favor a particular tribe over another. So every tribe should be treated equally. And if every tribe is being treated equally, mm -hmm. as a result of that tribe, um, you know, it will promote intercommunal relationship. That is, it will enhance other community members from another country to come to the, a particular, another, a different community member and live and work and enjoy their stay. Another one there is um, proper utilization of resources. That is, government should judiciously utilize the available resources to better the life of the citizens in various communities. That is, you know, every community has one um, one natural resources or the other. So, government making use of those natural resources very well will actually attract more people to such country, and it will promote intercommunal relationship, intercommunal. Um, businesses that that might need to be put in place. Now, moving on to the next subtopic, which happens to be challenges of intercommunal relationship. Challenges of intercommunal relationship. You know, intercommunal relationship, as sweet as it is, it, is, it also has some challenges which it faces. And as a result of that, you know, it slows down the left eye level, the level that intercommunal relationship ought to be going. Now, what are the challenges of intercommunal relationship? One, politics with tribalism. You know, we, so far we can we have seen a lot of political political tycoons who you know who you know in one way or the other follow or favors their tribe member. You know, that even if for job we are looking for a job, they favor those people from their tribe um, for appointments for political posts and many other things which they do in government. And you know, this can, you know, uh, the result of this, it, it, you know, tribalism maybe in parties or in communities. And, you know, the communities that is involved may likely face, you know, this problem that is, it might cause conflict and they might not like themselves. And when conflict happens, you know, nobody will want to be in such community again and they, and they might not be liked like they ought to or they don't, they've been before. Number two is lack of cooperation. When there is no cooperation in both communities, it can lead to destruction in the communities. That is, you know, community A and community B, they don't have a cordial relationship, they don't have cordial, um, you know, cooperation. It can actually lead to destruction of the community. And as a result of that, there will be a big problem if there is no cooperation. That is, it is very necessary for every community member to cooperate with one another in order to have, um, you know, in order to develop and um, you know, have some level of growth. Number three, it can lead to low development in community. Yes, exactly, because, you know, community members are not cooperating, there is tribalism and all that. It should be dropping the level of development because lesser people will be interested in the, in, in the, in the movement of the country. And as a result of that, you know, they might not actually be in their right senses and things that ought to be done might not be put in place. The next one that is that it can lead to loss of lives and property. That is when there is misunderstanding in both communities. And as a result of that, there might be, it, it might lead to war. And as a result of that, when there is war, they might lose their lives and even their properties. And as a result of that, some people might be displaced whereby they will not, be, they will not see their parents again or some will not see their children again. And the last one there is that it can lead to war. And the, we all know that the biggest challenge in intercommunal relationship is war, which can lead to death. And when war happens, it can ruin the whole community bottom. It can actually clear the whole community out of the existence of the face of heads. 
And when there is misunderstanding in both communities, you know, that is a big disagreement can lead to war in that process. It can lead to death of all community members. And when all community members die, that means the community is, you know, cease to exist on the face of the head. So those, all, all these are challenges of intercommunal relationship. Now, moving on to what are the problems of boundary disputes in Nigeria? Problems of boundary disputes in Nigeria. Um, you know, as you can see, the following are the problems of boundary disputes in Nigeria. Number one, boundary disputes lead to loss of lives and human resources, that is, when you know the the the, the there is boundary dispute that is there is issue by a particular boundary like Nigeria has such case of um, between Nigeria and Cameroon um, that's that the, the the boundary of Bat Bakasi Peninsula whereby the Cameroonians are claiming their land while Nigeria is also claiming that is their land but I think right now it has been cleared and I think the land has been given to Cameroon so people lost lose their life on you know. A lot of people, lives have been lost on that land. Due to is our land is not our is your own land is not you know a lot of fights happens. Another one is damage of property. The process of um, boundary disputes is always damage of property. You know whereby people's property will be destroyed, and you know those people's property that is being destroyed might displace them for life. Another problem is physical injuries. Physical injuries while clash when there is clashing. When they are fighting, so people might be injured, and the physical injury might be so severe, and it might be there for life. Number four, there is psychological disorder. Those people who are involved, maybe those people who are displaced, they were taken from that particular location or they, they, their land will be dis disordered psychologically. They might not be able to get themselves till they die, and this can actually also lead to death. Hunger and malnutrition. It just can actually bring hunger and malnutrition. Let's say, for example, if the particular land uh, or boundary is where the, the, the country's resources or you know, community resources is, and you know, as a result of that, it might lead to hunger to be such community, and as a result of that, you will not be able to feed well. Number the next one is sexual violence. You know, due to wars and all that, a lot of you know those fighting agencies, you know, do take advantage of. You know, violating some people sexually, as a result of that, you know, it's 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 good. Um, you know, it causes another psychological disorder on such girl or such woman. Then displacement of family. Like I said when there is war, when there is fight, when there is you know clashes, there is always displacement of family. Either the father is no more seen, or the mother is no more seen. Or the children are no more seen, or the, the children are not even seeing their parents again, and like that, like a lot of things happen that, as a result of that, they just become orphan, or you know, or become one without child again. And another one is slow down in education and development. You know, any place where there is clashes, there is war, there is you know, fights. Such education can never move on like it ought to be, and it will also slow down the um, development in such community slow down what the development in such community. Now, what are the skills for resolving intercommunal conflict? That is when there is intercommunal conflict, how can we solve it? Okay? How can we solve intercommunal conflicts? These are the, the following are the skills that one can make use of to solve intercommunal conflicts. Number one is through the, the law court. That is, you know, intercommunal conflicts can be resolved through the law court by using legal method, that is, taking the case to the court. Instead of fighting, instead of clashing, instead of shooting yourself, instead of using matches to, to arm yourself, instead of, you know, throwing punches at each other, take the case to court. When you take it to court, the community A will tender their, 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 their report. Community B will also tender their report. And as a result of that, it is not left for the judge to now look at the case very well, look and be able to educate in the right way and you know that any community that felt cheated you know can you know can present their case in the courts and the courts will actually stand in place for them and whatever value the court gives is the final that's one skill that one can actually make use of when there is that monarch conflict number two another skill is true mediation that is go back and set up space some special set of people who can be provided as special panel 
to mediate between the communities in conflict that is community A and community B. There will be somebody who will be there, an intermediary, who will, be, who will listen to what, this, what happened from community A and listen to what happened from community B. And instead of that, they come together and reason with them, begin to you know, dialogue with them. And instead of that, they will be able to mediate. The mediator, like having an intermediary between two of them in order to help them solve the conflict between them. That is the second skill. And the third one is dialogue or communication. That is, the opposing communities can meet to map out how to resolve differences or disputes between them. That is, two of, two of the communities coming together to discuss, okay, what is causing issues? Let's look at this. Okay, this is your, this is this, this is, it. and this, you know, they discuss it out. They talk it out among themselves. And instead of that, before you know it, they will, you know, know their differences and resolve it by themselves. Another skill is true community leader, that is, Community, communal conflicts can be resolved by le the leaders of the various communities, such as the others, obese, emirs, chiefs, those who they can, you know, call it a meeting for, within themselves and, okay, what is happening between our, within our community members, where well, can we solve it, what do you think the issue is, how did we start, and like that, the, the community leaders will discuss it, talk it out, and they will resolve it through that. And you know that the community leaders, whatever they say to the community members, they listen to them. So the heads can come together to resolve the issues on their behalf. That is another skill which one can use to resolve um, intercommunal conflicts. Then the, another one there is true peacekeeping force. That is, there's a special keep, um, you know, peacekeeping force like the army, the air force, the navy, the mobile police, etc. You know, can be specially set up by government in order to restore peaceful situation in the communities. And you know that such will surely help to secure lives and property of individuals in those communities. We have the case in Nigeria between Ife and Mudakeke when they were having you know, clashes. And these two communities are neighboring communities. They, they, they are the communities after one another. And you know, they, uh, I can't really remember what happened then, right now. But they were clashes, they were fighting, they were killing themselves. And what happened? Government sent some peace, you know keeping force down there, that is the arm and the armed force and the police, all of them were mobilized there. That's you know to what to maintain peace. As a of that the gov you know, government coming in, in, in place, you know, stepping into the intervening, being into the into issue, into the case, they there was they, they were able to settle down, you know, to an extent. The last one there is true compensation. Aside from all the excuse, all the one point I've mentioned so far, this one is another point which one can make use of through compensation. That is, communal conflict, conflict can be resolved by compensating the affected communities. That is, the communities that you know maybe their properties have been destroyed or or maybe is not guilty or that kind. Of, so they'll just find a way of compensating the communities so that such will, you know so that it can reduce the intercommunal conflict by compensating the community that is mostly affected, you know, as a sort of that, you can see that the, and even the, the term of the community that are even having this issue, that means maybe the, what they wanted is the compensation, you know, they might not want to say with their man, but they wanted to offer it, and say, so by giving compensation, as a sort of that, what will happen, there will be what, there will be peace, and there will not be war again. So, this is the, the end of the video and um, I need to also tell you that this is the end of the um, you know the scheme this is our scheme top of week 10 and this is the last video for uh, week 10 top term SS2 so please make sure you watch the videos from week one so with this particular one this week 10 in order to have uh, for your revision anyways so that um, you can have a better understanding and please make sure you prepare very well for your exam and questions will cut, cut, cut across from week one to week 10. So make sure you do justice to you know, writing your notes from the website, which has always been uploaded there. And likewise, the video through the uh, school website and make sure you prepare very well for your, um, for your exam. Um, it's going to be 30 questions. Please make sure you prepare very well to the extent that I want every one of you to score 30, 30, and I know you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Just put your mind to it. Read very well. Don't attempt any test or any exam without 
adequate preparation. Please make sure you prepare yourself very well and attempt all questions very well and score your 30 30. That's what I'm expecting from you all, and I pray God will be with you all. So have a wonderful um, time and enjoy the rest of your days. Bye for now.